Go hunting for black gold in the great state of Texas, and you might come up empty. It's got to come down all the way. But look for drilling rigs in desperate need of repair, and your cup will runneth over. Figuring that out made one mechanic a millionaire and earned him the title, the Don of Diesel. Meet Greg Hewlett. Let's see if we can get to work. I'm Greg Hewlett. I'm a diesel mechanic by trade. I turned repairing diesel engines into a million dollar business. All of these should be the same height and they're not. I'm the CEO of Mid-South Engine and Machine and we provide industrial engine repair, parts and service on diesel engines. I think it's something to do with the EGR valve. You know, I laugh at people that think that I'm just a grease monkey when I look at my bank account. And that's a little arrogant, but I'm telling you, man, people don't, they, they really don't understand. There are hundreds of active oil rigs in the Lone Star State, but each one's only as good as its engine. When that breaks down, Greg's the guy to call. When you see a derrick out in the air that's exploring for oil, this is the engine that powers that drilling rig. This is our bread and butter. Depending on what we find when we tear it down, the minimum would be about $65,000 and the maximum would be somewhere around $110,000. We'll take these all day long. Yep, Greg makes big bucks off big engines. His motto, when you want a job done right, and done lucratively, do it yourself. We've been able to do things that other vendors have not been able to do for our customers. We try to perform every operation we can in-house. We don't like to outsource anything. We should be good to be back up for production come Tuesday. We also have a fabrication division where we manufacture parts for our business as well. And it's about greed. I want to make that money myself. I don't want to give it to somebody else. Last year, our gross revenues were just shy of $20 million. That means with a profit margin of 20%, Greg pocketed roughly $4 million in 2014 alone. That's not a bad 365 days at the office. Financially, I'm very comfortable and enjoy a lifestyle that many wish they had, but I worked hard to get here and I'm not ashamed of how it happened. The early days, it was me, a 1985 Chevrolet service truck with an auto crane on it, and my blue heeler dog, and she rode in the front seat with me everywhere. The first five years, it was a struggle every week. We had to beg customers to pay us. Uh, it was hard to buy dog food from my old dog. My sales strategy was to be cheaper than everyone else. And then we found out that the way you get business is being better than everyone else. I met my wife Karen in 87, and at that point, I had not balanced the business checkbook since I had the account. When I first saw Greg's checkbook, it was a shock. <laughs> That's when I took over the checkbook, and to this day, I, I won't hardly let him write a check. Oh, she's looking for Grammy. There is no way we would be where we were at now if it wasn't for Karen. Greg might have started out with just a pickup and a blue heeler dog, but he's moved on to a whole lot more. Now we're a fleet of vehicles, hundreds of thousands of square feet, and 120 employees. We've got material and equipment going offshore in the Gulf to California, West Texas, North Dakota, and it makes us proud to see those going out the gate. So many years, all it was was work, 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 16 hours a day, six days a week. Now we don't have to do that quite as hard. And my lifestyle right now, I, I wouldn't change for the world. This is our home. If you move to East Texas and love the pine trees, you have to live in a log home. So we found a log home, luckily found one that had a shop space in the back. It's not really like it was when we bought it. When we moved in, it was three bedroom, 2,100 square feet. And now we're close to about 9,000 square feet. We added this great room. We added a formal dining space along with that. So when we have all the kids and grandkids here, everyone fits. All right, got some pork shoulder. Cooking's been a great part of my life. There's quite a competition with my siblings and I as far as cooking when we get together. So I had to add a kitchen that was better than anything else they had. So I've added a really nice chef's kitchen down there for me to play in. This is a lot of good toys for a big old kid. Okay, we're about ready to serve some pulled pork. Now, my favorite part of the whole property. I love music. I was starting to collect some memorabilia and I needed a place to keep all this stuff. So I kind of presented that to Karen that I was just gonna build a little garage with some space to have a, maybe a place to hang out in. And Greg, well, he wrote a few checks. <laughs> My labor of love, the man for it. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. It's just never been good when he has free reign of the checkbook. This is my boat in the man for it. I still have to work. So I build a boat in the man for it where I can enjoy some time on the boat. It's like being in the middle of the ocean. We ended up buying a condo in the Gulf Coast. This is what it's all about. 
I don't think I've ever had a bad day when I woke up and saw the sun come up across the Gulf of Mexico. But when Greg wants an amazing day, he watches the sunrise from the deck of his big ass boat. And this one even floats. I christen thee, no someday. I never lose sight of what got me here. Uh, all that hard work, and I'll never discount any of that, but I'm gonna enjoy it now. I've known a lot of people through the years that said, someday I'm gonna move to the Gulf Coast. Someday I'm gonna go to cooking school, or someday I'm gonna buy a boat. Well, guess what? I'm not going to wait for someday because there's no someday. If I can do it now, I'm gonna do it today. What a beautiful day it turned out to be.